Okay, so we are back with a new series, but this time it's a Yamaha. I know, I feel like I've gone to the dark side, um, but this series is focused on this Wave Raider 1996. It was a one owner find again, 58 hours, all of my usual criteria, as you guys know, I'm fussy. And really, it's like a showroom piece, so I just couldn't resist it. So if you haven't checked out yet, watch this video here first. Have you been after one of these for ages? Though? Ages because I go all the way down to Paul again, I buy the ski, and it was all the 24 hour period again. So I literally found it on the internet, on Facebook Marketplace, rang the guy the next day, actually pestered the guy quite a lot because he had about four people interested. And I said, I'll give you a deposit. I'm serious about this ski, let me have it. I went all the way down, purchased the ski, and yeah, it's here 24 hours later. So the ski itself is a Yamaha Wave Raider 1996, 1,100cc engine. So it's not a small engine in comparison to some of the Sea-Doo's of this era by any means. So it'll be interesting to see how much horsepower and how quick the jet ski is. In addition, this jet ski does have Yamaha's equivalent VTS, so the trim system on the rear pump. The other great thing about this ski for this year is it had an hour meter, so you could keep track of how many hours a ski's done. On this one, 58 hours, one owner. 24 years has passed, it's been in the same family for all of that time. The guy who I purchased it off of actually inherited it from his dad. So that sort of history, is just incredible. So what's the focus of this series? Well, for me, a large part of this is about riding Yamaha for the first time, you know, experiencing the difference. I love 90s classics, so for me, this has to be done right. I have to be unbiased and fair to the Yamaha community and give it a go and see how it compares. That being said, I am gonna put this ski through its paces. The bar is pretty high for a sea do for me, so it's gonna have to be good to change my opinion or perception, let's call it a perception. So it wouldn't be classic jet skis without some restoration pieces now, would it? So most notably on this ski, the handlebar grip is ripped, meaning I'm gonna to have to try and source the part. Now I'm praying and hoping that you can still get these, most likely on eBay, somewhere in America. It always seems to be in America where you have to source these parts. So next up we have this tie down point. It's missing a plastic grommet as you should have it the other side. Now it's got lost obviously. It allows you to tie down with a strap through the ski and basically lock it into the trailer. So when you're towing it, it's not bouncing around. So we're gonna to have to try and source one of those. Hopefully it's not too hard to find. And as always, there's decals that I need to change. In this instance, it's good. It's just the number on the front. It's been done as a patch, which I personally don't like. I like individual cutout letters. So I'm gonna change that. In addition, there are some other little niggly bits, which I'll quickly show you. So we got another aftermarket nasty decal. That's gotta go. So we also have some little gel coat scratches just spotted around the ski. This being the worst one, so that needs to be sorted. And these ones, there's some chips here, so they need to be sorted out. That one actually looks like gel coat crack, whereas that one's a chip, so they have to be sorted out. And one more annoying little cosmetic bit is these back plastic panels, if you like, which are like the bumpers for the ski. They've got these little scuffs. Now, realistically, it is a bumper, so its job right is to basically stop the rest of the ski getting damaged if it were to bump into anything. But me being me, I want these to look like new. So what am I going to do? Well, I've did some research, and I have a really, really fine sandpaper. I should be able to take just the edge off of these, and then buff it back up and put some polish and wax back in it to give it shine. So let's hope that theory works. So next up, we need the seats off. So where the seat has been taken on and off, we have these little rub marks where basically the gel coat, the top layer of the gel coat has been taken back, which is basically left like the top layer up of the fiberglass. Now they're not really that bad, but with that being said, I'm gonna take it into my local spray shop. The guy has expertise in gel coat, so he's gonna patch these and actually then touch them in because for me, every time I take the seat off, it just irritates me. Next up, we have the battery box. Now the battery box, I believe, would have probably started a nicer white than this. It's bleached. Now it's become something like your nan's furniture in her living room, which is a bit brown and musky. So that can be taken out. I do need to remove the self-adhesive seal and there's two positioning screws to lock it in. I'll take that out and again, I'll get that plastic prime and I'll get it sprayed just to give it a bit more color. I know I could probably clean it, but realistically it's not gonna come back to true white. So a couple more little cosmetic things to do, but not too bad. The engine bay on the other hand, the important bit, is gleaming, I mean gleaming. It's surprising, it's literally incredible. This is 24 years old, right, 1996, and this engine bay looks like new. The telltale sign, right, this is the thing to do when you look at an engine bay. Look at all the polystyrene, look at the bottom panel. If you see loads of oil, loads of dirt and stuff, normally it's a good indication of work or just the way it's been kept. Now this engine is clean, and I mean clean. 
Now, one thing I'm not keen on is the previous owner obviously loved grease because it looks like it's been thrown at it. It's not a bad thing by any means. It shows that they're trying to keep it lubricated, you know, keep things moving freely. The thing is, you don't need that much. That's excessive. So I'm going to reduce some of that, give it a good clean out. The other thing is you're probably looking at the underside of that hood, right? And thinking that looks odd, the colouring. Now that is actually the makeup of the fibreglass itself. However, depending on a little bit of research and looking into it, I'm very tempted to remove some of this componentry and actually mask and tape all of this up, mask up the area and potentially do like a gel coat spray on the inside of that just to get it looking a little bit more intentional. I like to keep things OEM but I think that would be a modification that would enhance the character of the scheme not detract from it. Then we've got these little side pods that are cosmetically really good however the little washers that hold them in are rusted. It is 24 years old to be expected so that's going to come off and I'm going to put some little baby fresh ones on there and that will be good as new. And then we've got this plastic component. Now the cap's faded a little bit, which is always normal on these old plastic cowlings and things. So hopefully I can put some shine back into that. I'll buff it up and then put some wax and polish back into it. So this cap is very tight. Jesus, is wow, it's very tight. Ah, there we go. And there's a little bit of compression that gets released there as well. It's okay, he is old. these scratches out on here so I'm going to give that a rub back down and then put the shine back into it it's likely from where the ski's been moored up and stuff along its lifetime so that's the jet ski then we've got the trailer now the trailer in this one is actually a bit of a wreck to be honest it's okay in terms of structurally but rust wise some of the areas are awful now components like the jockey wheel the hitch they don't concern me because they can essentially be removed and replaced for relatively inexpensive good quality parts the bit that I need to change is the fact that at the moment this doesn't have a winch post. Now a winch post is essential and makes it so much more enjoyable and easy launching and unlaunching your ski. So like we did with a 1991, I'm going to work with my metal supplier to actually remove this existing snubber block, which is essentially what the ski pushes up against. So cut that off completely in terms of metal work. This strut at the front will then be extended to allow for the additional space needed for a new winch post and obviously winch. So that's the theory with the trailer, functionally speaking. Then aesthetically speaking, the cosmetic bit, I'm gonna have the trailer powder coated, maybe in white on this one. This might be the first trailer that I do in gloss white to match the underside of the hole. And then obviously the wheel arches, my staple thing, I'm gonna color code match them and have them sprayed to match probably a red or a blue on the trailer. So the trailer will obviously transform the whole look of the ski, but we've got a good starting point. So that's what's coming in the series, guys. So hit the subscribe button, come along and watch. There's only one more thing to do. And that's right it. But for the time being, when it's on the driveway, I'm just going to keep pretending because that's what I like doing. Wham, bam. On a serious note, I probably need to improve my jet ski noise because it doesn't sound like a two stroke. But anyway, who cares? I'm enjoying myself. Thank you for allowing me to make this channel, make these videos. It's a passion project for me. I love keeping these skis alive. Keep requesting the videos. I'll keep making them. I'll keep going to obscene places to buy them and spending all my money on jet skis. And yeah, let's just keep the 90s classics alive. Don't give in. Never give in. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Come on in. <laughs> I can't wait to get out of this. Let's go.